Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Fate Stay Night. It is the afternoon now. Well, in the game, it's late evening for me. Tosaka seems busy and Sakura's sleeping, so I should make dinner. My left arm moves, even though it reacts slow, so it shouldn't hinder me if I'm to make something simple. That's why we're making a four, you know, a four-course meal with ratatouille and all that stuff. Because that's simple for me, the master chef. Look, literally, what did I just say? Actually, that's fairly simple, all things considered. Yo, real talk, though. Swordfish? Really good. I don't know if it's available in your part of the world, person who's watching this video. But if you ever get the chance, please do try swordfish. It is a wonderful, wonderful type of fish. I check the contents of the refrigerator and decide the menu. There are two additional people eating now, so the food gets used up pretty quickly. I should find some time to go to the shopping district tomorrow. All right. Look at this happy group of people. Everyone must have liked having dinner ready when they came here, since they all seem to be in a good mood. I'm worried that Ryder isn't here, but I'm sure she has her reasons. Her top priority is Garden Sakura, so maybe she has no intention of spending time around Tosaka, who may end up being her enemy. I'll pack it up and take her some if she doesn't come. Ryder seems to like desolate places, so I bet she's either in the dojo or the shed, even though that's my special place. Tosaka picks up the fried swordfish and looks at me in surprise. It's golden fried with a scent of ginger with an elegant soy sauce taste. She seems to really like it. This game is just proof that, hey, if you want to be a hit with the ladies, the best way to get to their womb is through the stomach. That's how the saying goes, right? Ilya eats- that is the worst thing, I apologize. Ilya eats the potatoes in satisfaccione. It's unfortunate that she's only eating the potato part of the simmered meat and potato, but I'm glad she likes it. Wait. Sakura is tilting her head in confusion, chopsticks in hand. Huh. Guess we forgot the sugar. I made such a stupid mistake on something I'm so used to cooking. I served myself out of the big dish in the center and try some. That's strange. This tastes normal. Okay, we're having a Tales of Symphonia moment. And for those of you who know, you know. But the question is, who is the one in the wrong here? Is it us, who can't taste it? Or is it her, who can't? Oh my god, is she losing her senses? Sakura looks dissatisfied as she reaches out for seconds. One bite, two bites, three bites. Sakura. Oh no, she's the one who's losing her senses. Sakura smiles and keeps eating. Sakura keeps eating like nothing happened. I was worried by Sakura's odd behavior, but she seemed to be well enough after that. In fact, she asked for seconds three times. Sakura kept eating and finished off the food while Tosaka stared at her in surprise. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a... I can't tell what flavor is anymore, but need to be nice to senpai vibe. It's past 10 o'clock. Night Patrol, let's go. Tosaka finishes preparing and appears. Tosaka and I head out to patrol the town as planned. It's stupid that this is our only measure against Zoken, but it's all we can do for now. We need to defeat Zoken, Assassin, Saber, 
and the Black Shadow. They aren't the ones we can defeat head on. We have to sit tight until the countermeasure Tosaka is preparing is completed. We can't just stay at my house. According to the news this morning, Mato Zokin has started attacking ordinary people. We can't match them right now, but we should at least patrol the town so there won't be any more victims. And that's fair, but what do you do if you find them out and about? We put on our shoes silently, because we're good people and not like those freak Americans who walk around their houses in their shoes. We know how dangerous it is to go out into the town at night. Zokin is only after Sakura, but we sh should get in his way if we're walking about. In the worst case, it'll be a repeat of our encounter in the forest. Considering that, we can't be talking like hearted, light-heartedly. Ooh, then? We don't have anything to spare, but Tosaka glares at me and... Oh. No, she's not glaring at me. She's glaring at Sakura, who's standing in the hallway. That must be why she's here. I appreciate her concern, but her plan is already determined. Let's grab a blanket, pop on a movie, we'll be back before you know it.先輩は肩手が動かないし、姉さんだってもうサーバントがいないし。そう。ふざけないでさくら。あなたが私たちの敵であることは変わらないのよ。そんな、いつ造形の手駒になるかわからないやつに背中なんて預けられない。けど、
Man, this is not like Tosaka. She should be the one to say it like it's nothing. Instead, she's clenching her fists like she's trying to convince herself. Again, you have a picture of her in your room. You can tell this takes place a decent ways in the past, like, you know, 2002, 2003, because people can't get seriously mad about things they don't care about. Buddy, wait till you find the internet. There's a lot of people getting very mad about things they couldn't care less about. Tosaka's face turns red with anger, but I don't feel the usual intensity, and I know why. Trust me, we're the masters of making friends with our enemies. I'm sure in some weird alternate reality, Gilgamesh is our best bro. That made her tear up. Tosaka looks away and starts to walk. I reply to her absentmindedly and follow. Then... She calls my name without looking at me and... Hmm, that's adorable. Tosaka grumbles, embarrassed. Remember, we're all spaghetti lords deep down. It'd be like that. There's nobody at the Central Park. The park that's deserted even during the day is even quieter after the murder yesterday. The park is not a place for relaxation within the business district, and it is no different from a desert in an uncultivated land. <laughs> I mean, it, you can't really call it an accident, can you? Anything involving various body parts, including some that are missing, that can't be... that... that... had to be a bad accident. I still see traces of blood on the grass. It looks like a bucket full was spilled in four separate areas. The darkened patches have some distance between them, probably because the victims frantically tried to escape. It's all the information we can get out of this place. So how can I leave the side of the tragedy behind us? Where are we off to now? On to the bridge. We didn't find anything in Shinto. Maybe Zokin is not active tonight. Probably because the incident yesterday was so vivid. The date's about to change. A riverside breeze blows as we trudge home. And... Yes, we've established this. I suddenly feel like asking the question that was on my mind for a while. Yeah, 
But haven't we been kind of told that it's like absorption type? Bindings and coercions. Interesting. So bondage. Okay. On that day, the magic Sakura used when the crest worm tortured her. Must have been Rider's power. それは魔切りの近所であって得意とする魔術じゃないものまあ考えたところで意味ないわよ桜には魔術を使うだけの魔力がないものそんな余分な力真っ先に刻印中に食べられるんだから魔術は組み立てられないはずよそうかそれならい
あの子が私と同じ学園に入ってからは毎日のように弓道部に入り浸ってたしまあそれは知ってるけどうんそれでねしばらく経ってから気がついたのよあの子一度も笑ってないって。That's something I'm hearing for the first time. But I can't deny what she's saying. Come to think of it, Sakura always looked gloomy at school. Her words should make me happy, but. Sakura, they seem to hide a dangerous truth. Uh oh, maybe leaving her at home alone was a bad idea. Ah, it's past one o'clock when I return to my room. Actually, it's fine, I guess. I sit down on my footin. Our patrol yielded nothing. All we did was confirm that this morning's news was real. Enemies we must defeat. Just thinking about them sends cold. Nauseous feelings through me. Even a human could match Zokin or Assassin. Those two are different. I don't even know if the Black Shadow is a concept of death, and Saber is someone we don't even stand a chance against. As long as they are victims, we can't just ignore them, saying we can't beat them. I put my hand on the red cloth. I have a weapon. I don't know how far this will get me. But I do have a weapon. The question is if I can manage it. If my body can withstand it. I untie the knot on the red cloth. The cloth loosens up, and the blood flows into my arm. Oh, here it comes. At that instant, I think I heard a beast's howl. I'm stabbed. My whole body is pierced. Is this pain? If this is pain, then this is the pain I've then the pain I've experienced up until now isn't pain. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. The floor's ruggedness. The softness of the food hon hurts. It feels like I'm sitting on a mountain of swords. The air is poisonous, and I die three times as I breathe it in. Birds are tripping. The distance. The wind is strong. There's no moisture. My skin dries and turns into sand. Flooring, flowing, scouring, crumbling. Tongs are inserted in from. The hollowed holes. Thirty-two enter where my shoulder used to be. They carefully, accurately, elaborately pierce my internal jugular vein, trachea, spinal cord, sympathetic nervous system, lobus superior pulmonis, lobus medius pulnoris dextri, lo lobus inferior pulmon pulmonis, main artery, heart, diaphragm, spleen, stomach, liver, gallbladder, and colon. Well, he's... This dude didn't fail bio class, that's for sure. He can just rattle them off in order, huh? It's crumbling. Time slows to an impossible crawl. I see 60 trillion cells crumbling apart at the rate of 3, 4 knot per second. <laughs> there is no pain. There is no pain. There is no pain. There is only fear. The end roll invades with amazing speed. The flashback stops with a fantastic image. Death before my eyes. Death past me. Death at the moment. The pain is not physical, but only the explosion of negation every time death is thrown at me. What in God's name is going? Oh, that was spooky. I like how even in darkness, Stain remains. Actually, this makes Stain look 3D. I hear a sound. The sound of my head striking the floor. My eyes are hot. I realize I've been crying. Desperately, I stifle the scream building up in my throat. I curl up, push my head against the floor, grab my left arm with my right arm, and cr just cry. Buddy, this was a bad idea. I'm scared. The thing I've been missing since the fire ten years ago. I'm scared. A natural fear for any living thing. I'm scared. For the first time in my life, I want to run away from my end. What is happening? It's not because dying will hurt. It's not because I want to live. It's just because it fills me with dread. I tie up the red cloth. I tie the knot tight so it'll never come loose again. I groan and cry. The priest said I'll die if I use my left arm. That's nonsense. I'll die if I take this cloth off. My body might be able to bear it, but my mind will die. My consciousness crumbled away when I loosened the cloth and my shoulder touched the outside air. I could not bear it. I cannot live with this cloth. No. 
If this arm is a contradictory existence that people should not associate with, with my body, its death foretold, runs to the terminal station. The ship, with a crack in the bilge, can only sink into the ocean depths. The passengers unaware, too late for anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crystals? My breath is running wild. I had a bad dream. I wiped the sweat off my forehead. I can't stand up. I stay coward, bearing the strange pain. Can't remember. My left arm hurts. It hurts so much that I want to cut it off. I try to recall why it hurts, but I can't remember how to recollect anything in the past. The pain goes away. I gather up my consciousness. It must be because I was asleep. The dispersed memories look as if they can be cooked nicely like chopped onions. See? I can add color with the soy sauce, add flavor with pepper, and add some potato starch to complete the dish. Guys, I'm gonna be extra honest. What is going on? I murmur to myself. My head is good for nothing, but I can still manage to come up with a conclusion. Oh, so he's just having one of those times where your mind wanders and goes nuts. Okay, no, that's understandable then. In short, I don't have to eat something that's not good. My left arm is already gone. Nobody relies on something that's not there. Therefore, Amishiro has no weapon. This foreign body is something I must suppress using all my life, and will contaminate me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Suppressing it with the cloth is meaningless. If I want to rid myself of this poison, there's only one way. Then cut it off. That was written in, like, in-game stuff. Like, that wasn't text. But I still hold on to my left arm. A gun is pointed at my forehead. An image of a trigger. The trigger is my left arm. Once pulled, the gun will fire, blowing my brains from my skull. I shudder. I hold my breath and stare at the white wall. Clutching my arm, I lie down. Then cut it off. I close my eyes, my whimpering finish, and decide to get some sleep for tomorrow. Whew! Y'all ever get them thoughts? A small sound. I wake into the sound of footsteps. I wake up in my dozing mind. It's almost two o'clock. It hasn't even been 30 minutes since I fell asleep. Oh, that's the worst! I get up, still unconsciously holding onto my left arm. Sakura. Outside the room. I call out to the hallway where the footsteps came from. It's not that I know who's there. I just thought Sakura might be there. The door opens to a scene that I had to double check the patch. We are on sensor. Good. Sakura steps through into my room. I've seen the other version of this image. Biting her lip in embarrassment, she looks down as if unsure of what to say. Sakura apologizes. Yep, I've seen the other one of this one. But I'm the one who should apologize. The reason why Sakura is here. I know well enough the pain she has to go through. I stand up. I was so caught up with my left arm that I forgot about Sakura. I can't be forgiven if, even if I apologize. Assume the position. Sakura blushes and nods. There's nothing for her to be embarrassed about, but maybe Sakura feels the action of sucking blood is somehow indecent. Oh boy. Boy, does he not know about the other universe. She looks down, seeming troubled. Oh, right. We can't start like this. She whipped my finger before. This time I can share my blood in a more practical way. What are you getting? I stand up and turn towards my desk. But I unconsciously tried to move my left arm. Damn, that's pitiful. I used my left arm and was reminded of the pain. Still, it shouldn't hurt as long as I have the cloth on, so what am I frightened about? I rummage through the desk with my right hand and pull out a box cutter. I, what? Buddy, that's really weird. I don't know about that. I feel like the biting is much better. I push out the blade with a clicking noise, checking whether it's gotten chipped or dull. 
I can't make soccer bite me, so I need to make myself bleed instead. Dude, just ask her to bite you. It'd be easier if I had a syringe or something. I'm sure that drug addict Sakura over in her, uh, Tosaka in her room. I keep getting their names mixed up. It's the ska sound. I'm sure she has one. So in this case, all that's left is quickly cut my arm and let the blood throw up flow. Make sure you pick the right one. Because I feel like if she took it from the other one, something bad would happen. Yes. My right hand is holding the box cutter. My left hand and the arm attached to it are wrapped up. This is stupid of me. If I'm holding the cutter in this hand, then of course I can only cut the other arm. Even loosening the cloth hurts, so it's cutting it is out of the question. What's gonna... Just stab your thigh? Well, my left hand can't move well enough to hold it. I think about what to do, and... I hear the echo of a howl. What? Whoa, this is weird. Uh, we're in the life stream. There's still time, it says. I don't need this arm, it says. Oh no, are we gonna just cut off our arm? Just think about it. Just loosening the cloth causes you that much pain. So there's still time. There's a blade in your hand. Unlimited box cutter works. You'll waste your life on sealing that invasive thing away. You'll live in perpetual fear of the explosive that could go off at any time. Even if- even just its timer will be enough, so gouge it out with the this box cutter. I mean, we all get these thoughts when we're holding knives sometimes. You just think, what if I stab myself? I freeze, holding the box cutter. I decided not to hold on to this regret anymore, but holding a blade brings it all back all of a sudden. My heart hammers, cold and mechanical, and my eyes go out of focus. So what in gosh dang heck? does he do in the other version of this scene? Her voice breaks the spell. I lower the box cutter and breathe deeply. Just thinking some dark thoughts. I'll just pop a Tums after this. I moved the box cutter lightly. The pain was really nothing to worry about, only a small sting. The blood flows more quickly than I thought. Now to give it to Sakura. Oh. I dropped the box cutter. Sakura stares at the cut of my arm and the trail of red liquid running along it. She goes limp, as though her fright until now had just been an act. There's an intoxicated look in her eyes. Her moist, parted lips and a pale throat move greedily. She twists her body as she crawls across the futon towards me on all fours, like Valdo from Soul Calibur. <laughs> it's as if some sleek beast has taken Sakura's form. Sakura. I don't know what to say at this sudden change. All I can do now is hold onto my arm, dripping with blood to the wrist now, to Sakura. She loves it. The blood drips from my fingers. It dribbles between her soft, wet lips. The blood continues dripping onto Sakura's outstretched tongue. Sakura rapidly licks my fingers. I don't feel the pain from the cut, only the softness of Sakura's tongue at my arm. It's happening again. The irresistible sensation is coming back. You think that's good? You should try my cooking. <laughs> the sight of Sakura licking my arm is beautiful and captivating. As though she hadn't been frightened just moments before, Sakura's charm stimulates my mind. Oh, there it is, the red vision. These are very tough sounds to listen to. It's as though she's lapping up honey. Sakura's lips gradually approach the cut. They cover the still bleeding wound. That indescribably pleasant feeling is back. All that strength goes out of my shoulders. It's a bewitching sweetness, different from when she was licking my fingers. I grit my teeth and hold back my voice. I'm not a moaner. My blood is being taken, but the pleasant feeling pours in its place. The pain from the cut becomes dim and I can barely feel my right arm anymore. 
Sakura's pressed my arm, drinking deeply. I know this is to replenish Sakura's magical energy, but to think they would be this sweet. Does he mean like, yeah, sweet? Like, actually like that? Sakura's murmuring voice stimulates my nerves. The pleasure of her drinking my blood reaches all the way to my shoulder. Uh, my left arm is filled with pain and fear, while my right is filled with pleasure and loss. Sakura. I embrace Sakura. Holding her in the arm from which she's drinking, I bring her close to my chest. Still, she keeps drinking, as though it's something delicious. It's kind of cute. The pleasure of the honey being sucked intoxicates me more than Sakura's soft body, or the feeling of her lips at my arm. A hard to describe urge arises in my mind, one that we won't get to in this route. I want to hold Sakura so tightly that she breaks. That's a bit weird, dude. She continues to suck. It feels like she's sucking up my energy, not only my blood. The thought enters my hazy mind. Uh, what? Whew. Hey. The game's like, oh, you're starting to put it together, aren't you? It reminds me of something. It doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> How long did we stay like this? Sakura reluctantly separates her lips from my arm. My head is heavy. It feels like Sakura is still drinking from me. My mind feels like it's floating through the air. Still, I try to see if Sakura is okay. I mean, you're not wrong. Sakura looks down remorsefully. With that, maybe because my magical and physical energy has been used up, the last of my tension disappears. The power of my mind turns off. I can't think of anything. Can't remember the gentleness of Sakura's arms or the pleasant feeling for a second of my blood. It's like I just dreamed of giving Sakura my blood. I fall into a deep sleep. My tired body forgets about Sakura addressing my wound and returning to her room. The uneasiness in my mind would happen tonight. I go back to the light sleep I was having an hour ago. Yo, who needs any sort of- Oh! Oh, it's red again! It's... Uh, it is in a red sea. The familiar scenery is submerged in seawater, turning the town into an aquarium. Instead of air, something thick flows into the throat. The more it gasps for breath, the more heavy, watery substance it sucks in. So this has to be underwater. It gasps out that it is painful. It originally lived on land, it cannot possibly live underwater. It tries to reach the surface and eventually reaches the highest place in the town. The suffocation does not abate. It looks down at the town, lungs burning from a lack of oxygen, and curses the peacefully sleeping townspeople. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. There's no air here. There's no pain here. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It drags corpses behind it. Its body is bright red, covered with blood. It hurts, it hurts, it needs more, it hurts. Hey, this is the shadow. In its black hands, there are many corpses. The distorted hands grasp many dead bodies. Need more, need more, need more, need more. It smashes them, dying itself red. Need more air. The air hurts. The water pressure is uncaring. The water pressure is unbearable. It smears the red blood all over its body. It probably thinks that the blood is not the only water type protection it has to live in this water. It reaches out its twisted hands. Illuminated by the moon, the dark hand becomes a giant shadow and descends to crush the town. Hmm. That's a cut. She wakes up. She's breathing hard from her restless sleep. Astonished by the dream's realism, she hugs her feverish body. So those are dreams. And at that instant, her hands are wet with blood. Ah. She shuts her eyes and pulls her hands away. But when she looks again, they are clean. Although she knows it was just a hallucination, she can't stop trembling. She trembles. She trembles like a broken machine. She trembles so violently that bolts might spill from her ears. All the parts in her body will spill out like that, 
and the image is so frightening that she cannot stop trembling. She heads to the bathroom. She makes it only a few steps. Her quaking limbs will not follow her orders. She braces herself against a desk. Her vision wavers. She can't make it to the door. She can't even see it clearly. She can't remember what kind of a dream she was having or why she got out of bed. She's broken. <laughs> you can say that again. She can't remember anything. She can't think of anything. There is nothing but greed and hunger. She wants hot skin and kind words. She wants a good lovin'. So come to me, Sakura. I'll give it to you. She lies on the desk and shakes her head. Fear and infinite self-hatred. Something is wrong. Why hasn't she had enough? A few hours ago, she was given what she needed, but it hasn't filled her up at all. Oh! She's the very hungry caterpillar. She was glad. She thought there could be no greater happiness, but she's not the least bit satisfied. She's probably empty, and that's why he alone cannot fill her up. But she doesn't want anyone else. She wants to be his for much longer. She wanted it at the cost of time, emotion, and other people. So why didn't she do so? And she naturally realizes that she can eliminate all the things she just thought about. She feels dizzy. It's not so far-fetched. What's scary is that... She really thought that it would be fun. It's a lot this part that makes me go, what is happening? I mean, I kind of get what's happening, but... She leans on the desk. She keeps her collapsing body steady. The frightening dream becomes clearer every day. The frightening dream becomes less frightening every day. She is breaking down. Until now, it was only her body. But now she's beginning to go mad. Moans escape her mouth. Her vague memory is no problem. It doesn't matter if she cannot remember what happened a few hours ago. She's not scared of being in bed forever. She's terrified of becoming something else. She doesn't want to become a bad person. If she slowly breaks down like this, she will go crazy in the end. She'll probably become something that will cause him the most trouble. That's what terrifies her. It's scary to go crazy. It's more scary than anything else. If she does, he will not touch her, nor will he love her. She won't be able to be with him. She wouldn't know... She won't even know if she is with him. Not only that, if she loses her mind, he will be with another woman. She doesn't want that. She really doesn't want that. She always thought he would should be with someone else, someone better suited to him, but she can no longer accept that. Because he is already hers. That's why it's frightening. She's scared of what she might do. Well, this is big mood. She knows, yet there's no salvation. She cannot tell him of this dysfunction. If she tells him, it will be back to the cold for her. She cannot return to the cold now that she has known warmth. She wants to keep smiling at him. But she knows what will be lost if this continues. Her wish is just a desire. She wishes for one person's happiness, yet her happiness requires the ruin of that same person. If she cannot do so, she could just break down and disappear. If she's going to go crazy, she should disappear now and become a monster in a place with no people. That should be the best choice. But she still clings to it. She wishes for more because it's warm and happy here. So why? Why such a normal desire forbidden to her? Why is such a normal desire? She shakes off her weakness. She's not envious. She's not holding any grudges. She justifies her decision, saying that she merely wants to stay here. She shakes her head in denial. She shuts her dark mind with an empty she shuts her dark mind with an empty head. There are no happy endings. She turns her eyes away from the obvious conclusion. Her hazy mind is already experiencing another nightmare. Forcing down her wish to be saved, she keeps on crying. Oof. Interlude out, huh? All right. Overdose. Tasaka. All right. We're going to hit that big save yeet. Um, Sakura is having a rough time. Do your best. That's really all we can say. All right.
but there is a uh, a, a scene that I need to watch. I will do what I did last time and show you all snippets of it from my Discord. So, uh, if you are interested on my thoughts, I might put them there, but it'll probably be the same thing. Actually, I will say, it was really interesting. People were saying that in the movie version, she at first says, just let me suck your blood. And then she's like, no, I can just do the other thing. Uh, showing that, yeah, it works both ways. So that's kind of cool. It's literally like, there's no problems with that um all right i'll see you all next time and please enjoy this version that's gonna be a lot of fun for me to read ciao